Hey everyone! Well, after suffering those freaking cold winds on day 12, it was time to pack up camp and head to our last two 14ers. Whoa. On day 13, we got to do some touristy things and also knock quite a few items off our list, as well as meet up with some good friends. To start the busy day, we visited one of the highlights of the Leadville area, and also our 12th water feature. We're here in Leadville, Colorado, nestled in Lake County, which obviously has a lot of lakes. That brings us to our next water feature, Turquoise Lake. Turquoise Lake is just a few miles outside of town and provides a lot of opportunities for fishing, boating, there's even a trail that goes all the way around the lake, which provides a little bit of opportunity for some flat running in the land surrounded by huge mountains. During the Leadville 100 Mountain Run, it's pretty neat to come out here and see the hundreds of headlamps just circling around the lake. Before hitting the road, we snuck in a quick visit to our 12th coffee shop, Cookies with Altitude. Over 10,000 feet of altitude. This cool little place had a colorful atmosphere and just seemed a perfect fit for a small Colorado mountain town. Obviously, they have coffee and cookies. I had to start with a cookie appetizer. But they also have biscuits and gravy. You know I couldn't pass that up. And I branched out with a turkey panini, which was pretty much fabulous. Now it was time to start heading south. Along the way, we made a slight detour for our 13th scenic drive, about a 16 mile stretch of County Road 162. The drive is mostly in pine forest with a few glimpses of the towering peaks and flowing creek nearby. Along the way, we stopped for a short hike to our 13th water feature, Agnes Vale Falls. Subtitled, because it was crazy windy. In just over a short half mile hike from the road, you can get to the Agnes Vale Falls. Agnes Vale was born in 1890 in Denver. She was a super adventurous woman, but one sad day when climbing Long's Peak, she fell, and although she survived the fall, she froze to death before help could come. So, her friend Joe named these waterfalls after her. As we made our way back to the truck, we noticed whipping in the crazy wind what we decided to be our 10th featured wildflower, the hairy golden aster. There have been fields of these little yellow flowers all over the place, and there's a lot of little yellow flowers. So not being flower experts, it's kind of hard for us to tell them all apart, but by my research, the best I can guess is that these are hairy golden asters. There's just fields of them, and they look beautiful in the sunlight. The golden aster's hair was definitely blowing in the wind. Definitely, and the dust in my face. After stretching out our legs, it was time to get back to our scenic drive out to St. Elmo. County Road 162 leads to one of the best preserved and easiest to reach ghost towns in all of the West, St. Elmo. During its boom days around 1880, the town housed around 2,000 residents. There were plenty of saloons to entertain the gold and silver miners. The town held on longer than other nearby mining settlements, but eventually fizzled out just before 1960. Now, it's home to just over 40 well-preserved buildings, a general store, and not much else. After being tourists all day, we had worked up a bit of a thirst, which means time for a distillery. Yay! So we drove to Buena Vista to visit distillery number 13, Deer Hammer Distilling. Almost a 14. As luck would have it, our friends Mike and Steph were in the area and decided to come meet up with us. Like we've done at most of the distilleries, we kicked things off with a tasting flight before deciding what we really wanted to drink. Deerhammer is another one of those distilleries we've known about for years, but it took this project and the Colorado Spirits Trail to finally get us there. We've done 11 in the Colorado Spirits Trail book. We're making our way through it pretty good. One of the best things about being here at Deerhammer today is that the stars have aligned and we are once again able to meet up with friends on the road. And we're here with our friends Mike and Steph, which is why neither of us are holding a camera. 
So we're excited to be here and see Kendrick and Mandy, and uh, even more excited to check out the uh, Deer, Deer Hammer Distillery. So anyway, we, we got uh, a little bit of introduced to Colorado through uh, Kendrick and Mandy's videos, and have been out trying to explore all these cool places. Being able to catch up with these guys here was pretty cool, a lot of fun. And as they finish up their 14er initiative, we're rooting for you. We're here. We're glad we're here to help on the distillery aspect of it. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> We've really enjoyed getting out in Colorado. We have a four-wheel drive vehicle now, so we're able to go exploring places we weren't able to previously. And it's absolutely beautiful, stunning scenery. and so much to photograph. Absolutely love it. It had been a few days since we'd met up with any of our friends on this project, so getting to hang out with Mike and Steph was a great way to forget all about how exhausted we were and just have a good time. If there's one thing that's hard to beat, it's enjoying a good whiskey on a sunny Colorado patio with great friends. Lastly, no visit to Buena Vista is complete without a stop at our 13th brewery of our project, Eddie Lime Brewery. This place is conveniently located a short walk away from the distillery. So now that we've gone to Buena Vista's distillery, how about the brewery? Hey, I'm game. That sounds good. The beer at Eddie Line has always been amazing and seems to get better and better each time we come back. Of course, we had to indulge our appetites a bit with fried Brussels sprouts, chicken wings, and pizza. If you're in Buena Vista, don't leave before checking out one of Eddie Line's two locations. After the brewery, we made our way to where we would camp for the night. And if there's one thing this project has taught us, it is that we know absolutely nothing about flowers. We found our 11th featured wildflower, the yellow rabbit brush. We think. I know the Columbine. So the flower aspect of this project has been a little more difficult than we anticipated. Turns out there's a lot of flowers that look very similar. So I'm going to say with maybe 90% certainty that this is yellow rabbit brush, which grows in the foothills up to the subalpine regions of Colorado. If you're lucky, you'll have patches of this surrounding your campsite. With another long day under our belts, it was time to hit the sack because we have one day left to complete this entire project and we have quite a few things to go. So, after 13 days, our totals are 12 14ers, 13 distilleries, 13 breweries, 12 coffee shops, 11 wildflowers, 13 water features, and 13 scenic drives. Can we do it? We're close. It's hard to believe, but after 13 days, I think we might really finish this thing. Although day 14 is gonna be a huge day. So, let's see if we can do it. Here's to one more day exploring colorful Colorado. Love and light. We uh, first got introduced a little bit through Kendrick and Mandry's videos. Mandrick, is that a bad thing to say? <laughs> so I think it's Mandrick. Mandrick. <laughs> That's pretty Perfect. good. I like it. I do.